Hello everybody, it's Topic Thursday here on the Depsterism channel, going on live on Twitch, going live on YouTube at the same time. I hope that uh, you guys are ready for some interesting discussion because today is the day we're going to talk about men, MGTOW, and Valerie Solanus's Scum Manifesto. That's what I want to um, discuss today. So you can, uh, you know, put your questions up and stuff as we go along. I want to, uh, you know, welcome everybody here where you are right now. It's called the Dempsterism Channel. My name is Deborah Cooper. I am the advice columnist for survivingdating.com and askheartbeat.com. I've been doing that for like decades and shit, just a ridiculous amount of time. Longer than a lot of these newcomers are even old. And uh, that's just how it is. See my t-shirt, me sarcastic? Never. That's what it says, never. You know better than that. How could you say such a thing? You know that's not how I am. What's happening, everybody? It's all the all the regulars are rolling, starting to roll in. I know I was like a minute or two late. I couldn't get my act together. Actually, I could get my act together, but what I was doing was trying to see if I could get this video to um, to log log in. Oh, we will. We'll, you know, since well, the thing I miss about this is that you can't hear people. You know, I can just you can type it though, and then I can read it. And. Uh, where are my glasses? And we can, um, I don't know where I put them damn things. Did they fall on the floor? Shit. I can't really, um, read all of this without them. This is going to be interesting. I don't know where they went. I'm sitting up here looking crazy because they were right here on my desk and now they're not. I don't know where I put them. And I don't know. I don't see them anywhere. <sighs> I'm sorry, you guys. I, you know, some days, you know, one day soon in some lifetime, this probably not this one, I'll be like really organized. And <laughs> just like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what to say here I don't know where I put them damn things well here's some these I don't really like these though these are too strong these hurt my eyes but I guess I'm gonna have to use them for today oh no 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 this won't work um you guys bear with me because I have a lot of text to read I'll be right back Alright, let us begin by going, I want you guys to see this little clip and I want to talk about what he has to say. I hope this works. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We shall see. If it doesn't, if it doesn't start playing, then we will, uh, I guess we'll know in a minute. So me and Jada was reflecting about love. And I asked her, I said, what did she think was, you know, one of the biggest revelations that she had had about love? She said that you cannot make a person happy. And I thought that was a real deep idea. You can make a person smile you can make a person feel good you can make a person laugh but whether or not a person is happy 
is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. I remember the day um, I retired. I literally said to Jada, that's it. I retire. I retire from trying to make you happy. I need you to go make yourself happy and just prove to me that it's even possible. And after we cracked the hell up, um, we started talking about, we came into this false romantic concept that somehow when we got married that we would become one. And what we realized is that we were two completely separate people on two completely separate individual journeys and that we were choosing to walk our separate journeys together. But her happiness was her responsibility and my happiness was my responsibility. And so what do you think about that? What he had to say? I mean, I was looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, is this supposed to be like novel and unique and some deep new philosophy that don't nobody know about? Um, that should go without saying that other people are not in your life to make you anything, you know, whole, happy. Um, I mean, you know, they're there to to make your life better in a certain sense and that they bring something to your life that you can't bring, you know, to your yourself. I mean, you know, it's hard to like tell jokes to yourself and hug yourself and, you know, kiss on yourself and hold your own hand and, you know, make babies with yourself and be married to yourself and all these kind of things. But, you know, that's why I always advocate that you guys, you know, you can't really until you're whole and happy and you feel good about yourself by yourself, then, you know, looking for a relationship is like you just like a, a hungry, hungry hippo or something. Remember that little game, little kids you have or some Pac-Man or something. You just eating up people's energy and in life and love and and there's there's you just sucking in their psyche. Because you have a void that you're looking for someone else to fill that you have to fill for yourself. And um, so, you know, a friend of I were talking about, a friend and I were, and I were talking about this today. And, uh, you know, we just, we decided this is pretty obvious, you know, nobody else can really make you happy, but somebody else can make you sad at least for a minute, you know, before you end up leaving them or breaking up with them, you know, breaking off the relationship or whatever. Because, you know, you're happy with this person, you're happy by yourself, this person adds joy and laughter and whatever to your life. And so then, but suddenly they start falling off or they start tricking or doing drugs or cheating or doing something that brings you pain. Well, that person has now made you unhappy. Their behavior has made you unhappy. Their activities and their treatment of you has made you unhappy. So even though, you know, we really shouldn't, we should not depend on other people to provide us with, with happiness that we should be providing for ourselves. They definitely do have the power to make us happier and to make us sadder. You see what I mean? So um, that's how you have to be, that's why you have to be very diligent about who you let into your life. I thought it was just very interesting how he, you know, what he was saying and uh, people were acting like it was like the, you know, some manna from heaven or something. I'm like, that's just basic shit. Everybody should know that. Yeah, you have to be happy by yourself. You know, those people that aren't happy by themselves, those are the ones that we see globbing on to any man, any woman, got a bunch of stray kids over here and there, you know, a bunch of different baby daddies because they always looking for somebody to do something for them. And they think that they're going to achieve this thing by having babies or, you know, getting women pregnant and getting control over them. And this kind of stuff. People have some really twisted ideas about uh, about happiness. So. I just wanted to throw that in there. That's not really the topic, but I thought it was kind of um, a, a kind of tied into what we're going to talk about today, which is these the men with the MGTOW mentality and how they're so unhappy with women. Okay, so I started off by talking about happiness, right? How you can't depend on other people to make you happy. Yet these guys have positioned themselves and are resentful of women because the women that they were looking to make them happy um, in their life to date them and sleep with them and marry them and all this stuff, be with them, did not appear. So these guys are not only angry, 
you know, they're like livid, they're resentful, and they're just, you know, just acting like little hateful little fucks. That's what they're doing. So let's see. I found this really interesting and very well written article by a guy called This Group of Straight Men is Swearing Off Women. They call themselves men going their own way. And they dislike feminism so much, they are grabbing their balls and going home. So he, he clowned this entire video. Uh, and this thing was written in September 2015, so it's pretty old. And so he says, you know, his first line is he says, all of the world straight men are making the conscious decision not to be involved with women. And they're really cutting women out of their lives, not like a priest or anything. But um, it's, it says it's, it's, a, it's an ideology that crosses national borders and religious divides. The basic reason is the slow crawl towards gender equality. And that's what they hate. They feel like feminism has changed roles so much that men aren't men anymore and that women are keeping them from being men. Okay, so they're very angry. It says, to them, the feminist movement has all but ruined our society, and it just doesn't make sense to participate in the dating game because women have been, in their eyes, programmed to ruin a man's life. And around every corner, they seem to see one-dimensional women who are just out to take their well-earned money and stick them with kids who aren't theirs. And uh, I was like, wow, is that really what's going on? Yeah, straight men, that's, he does say that. But, you know, the way that they, they, they behave, um, it's not so sure. I'm not so sure about that. And this one guy says, um, this man was holding up a sign that said, women are programmed to ruin men's lives and feminism is a refuge for women's sexual failure. And he, but, you know, they say all this stuff, but if you notice what, is, what comes through most of the time is an overwhelming sadness. Is there just they seem to be very sad guys because it's like, you know, they come in like to come in on this channel, right? Guns blazing, you know, talking about women and they all say the same thing. I don't know if you guys noticed. They all repeat the exact same words, the exact same way, the exact same rhetoric. And I'm like, OK, so you swear off women. Then why are you here talking to women and bitching and moaning and complaining about what women on a channel for women have to say? Why are you here? Why are you here? But, you know, they want female attention so bad they would even get it, you know, negative attention from women online, I guess. I don't know. Um, they have what's called the four levels of MGTOW, which I thought was interesting because I hadn't heard this before. Level one, rejection of long-term relationships. A man rejects long-term relationships, but will still partake in short-term relationships and sexual encounters. These are the dudes that do what the, Eddie was talking about called the pump and dump they just want to use you it's like you just basically like a hand but it's your body okay and they care nothing about you it's 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 the most disgusting kind of behavior ever really that some one human being would think that that was appropriate behavior to do to another one but these guys have some emotional and mental is issues and so they want to get with you to line you line you up to use your body for sexual purposes so you guys have you ladies have got to be very careful of who you messing with and understand the guy's mentality now of course if you want that too then you all on the same page and then it's a good it's good but in in general, you know, a woman in her 20s or 30s is looking for something more serious. And, with you know, even if it's not married, she's looking for, you know, something long term. And so this kind of thing is very hurtful and it makes it really hurt. It stings deep and that's what they want. They want you to be hurting. So then they move up to level two, rejection of short term relationships. These people won't participate in hookups of any form of short term or sexual relationships. Level three, economic disengagement. A member at this stage refuses to earn more money than is necessary for sustaining his life. He views the government as a tyrannical and is trying to actively drain money from the bureaucrats. Okay, this is when they start getting into nut land. And level four, societal disengagement. This is as far as a mainstream MGTOW can go. Here, the man refuses to interact with society. These are the ones you see living in those those conclaves in the woods with you know them bushman jack beards or they live up in alaska in the mountains or some shit living off the land you know growing their food they don't want to have anything to do with anybody 
So those are the four, what I just read, were the four levels of MGTOW. So it looks like online what we mostly run into are uh, the level one guys. Because they, you know, they, they don't want a long-term relationship or marriage, but they still want to tap that ass for every woman. Okay. So I'm like, these dudes are a trip. Um, wow. Let me flip to another page before I go and talk about, about them. So they also have men going monk, which is another option. These are the guys, they're not religious, but they can't have sex outside of marriage but you know because of their religious beliefs they don't want to have sex outside of marriage however they sworn off of women so what are they going to do marry a man see that's why the issue becomes questionable about them being straight you see what i'm saying you say that you've swore off of women you don't want a long-term relationship with women but you so you go you're a virgin but you can only have sex within marriage, but then you don't want to get married because then you would be under the control of a woman and she would have, you know, half and all stuff. So, I mean, you put yourself in some very odd box, my dears. And I'm just like, you know, how does this work? How does this work? Um, this guy says, I hate getting associated with women, be it relationships or sex. I can't have sex with a girl that I don't love. I'm kind of old school here. Maybe that's just how I was born. For me to have sex, I need to love her. You sound like a fucking woman. Okay, you know, whatever, dude. I mean, you call your, you do what you want to do. Okay, well, anyway, that's enough of that. Let's move on and talk about our girl, Valerie Solanus. Now, Valerie Solanus wrote this thing. She's the one who was accused of shooting, stabbing, whatever. Anyway, she tried to kill Andy Warhol. And she, of course, did not succeed, and she got put in jail. And then while she was in there, she wrote this thing called the Scum Manifesto. It's all over online. And it's, it's not really, um, it's like a, a, a long essay maybe. But in it, what she's doing is talking about how raggedy ass men are. And um, that women need to wake up and understand what they're dealing with when they're really dealing with men. And she calls it the scum. She calls them scum, which is a society for something that, eradication of wait let me see so society for the something i forgot of men is what the m stands for well, but i don't Jada remember was the reflecting rest uh-oh what did about, i do sorry about that i accidentally um <laughs> i accidentally hit that video when i dropped the paper um let's put the chat back on the on the screen so you guys can see what's going on with yourselves um so let me read some of what she says about men that i think is very uh interesting and is in line with what's going on with the scum with the uh, MGTOWs. okay although completely physical the male is unfit even for stud service even assuming mechanical proficiency which few men have he is, first of all, incapable of zestfully, lustfully tearing off a piece, but instead is eaten up with guilt, shame, fear, and insecurity, feelings rooted in male nature, with the most enlightened training can only minimize. Second, the, feeling, the physical feeling he attains is next to nothing. And third, he is not emphasizing with his partner, but is obsessed with how he's doing, turning in an A performance, doing a good plumbing job. To call a man an animal is to flatter him. He's a machine, a walking dildo. It's often said that men use women. Ha! Huh? Use them for what? Surely not pleasure, she says. I mean, girlfriend went in. Okay, she just like went in. Then she says, eaten up with guilt, shame, fears, and insecurities and obtaining, if he's lucky, a barely perceptible physical feeling, the male is nonetheless obsessed with screwing. He'll swim through a river of snot wade nostrils deep through a mile of vomit if he thinks there'll be a friendly pussy waiting for him he'll screw a woman he despises any snaggletooth hag and furthermore pay for the opportunity why relieving physical tension isn't the answer as masturbation suffices for that it's not ego satisfaction either because that doesn't explain screwing corpses and babies completely inner egocentric unable to relate emphasize or identify and filled with a vast pervasive diffuse sexuality the male is physically passive 
He hates his passivity, so he projects it onto women and defines the male as active, then sets out to prove that he is, that he's a man. His main, main means of attempting to prove it is screwing. Since he's attempting to prove an error, he must, quote, prove it again and again. Screwing, then, is a desperate compulsion to attempt to, an attempt to prove he's not passive, not a woman. But he is passive, and he does want to be a woman. Bam! The trans movement. What the fuck is that? It's like she had, like, psychic, psychicness or something. And she could see 40 years into the future and see what the fuck we was going to be dealing with. I'm telling you, girlfriend is like visionary. And you know, a lot of people look at Valerie Stars and they say, oh, you know, she's a man hater. She's this and that. The girlfriend was a seer into the future to see what men really are and, and you know, the mentality that a lot of them have. I mean, even what she said here about them successful screwing, but they don't want to do anything. You know, they want to have a friendly pussy. Why do you think all these dudes are going overseas to get them a, quote, wife? And when you look at them, I did a video on it. They kept saying this one phrase, you know, they want to have pretty friendly women. Friendly how? Friendly means that, you know, they get to sleep with them. And this thing about, you know, doing the, the pump and dump, they're not looking for it. a girlfriend. They don't care what you look like and what you got going on, how smart you are, what your body looks like, nothing. They don't care what their kid is doing. What she said, they'll screw a woman he despises because they act like they despise you, right? But yet they want to screw you. And any snaggle tooth hag, and furthermore, will pay for the opportunity. And these, the MGTOW, they advocate going to prostitutes. I mean, she put it right here. This is like the anti MGTOW manifesto. That's what it is. Oh my God. Valerie Solanas, S O L A N A S. She's like a leader in the feminist movement, and girlfriend is like no joke. No joke. Of course, she's deceased now, but still. Okay, so then she says, um, being an incomplete female, the male spends his life attempting to complete himself to become female. He attempts to do this by constantly seeking out, fraternizing with, and trying to live through and fuse with the female. And by claiming it, claiming as his own all female characteristics, emotional strength and independence, forcefulness, dyna dynamism, decisiveness, coolness, objectivity, assertiveness, courage, integrity, vitality, intensity, depth of character, grooviness, that was the real word in the 60s, and projecting onto women all male traits, vanity, frivolity, triviality, weakness, etc. It should be said, though, that the male has one glaring of area of superiority over the female, public relations. He has done a brilliant job of convincing millions of women that men are women and women are men. The male claim that females find fulfillment through motherhood and sexuality reflects what males think they'd find fulfilling if they were filming female, which is why the motherfuckers are trying so hard to become, get artificial wombs and, you know, carry fake things where they could fake like they're nursing and, you know, to get implants so they could be pregnant. All the shit that this woman said in 1967 is what they're doing right now in 2018. Tell me she was lying. See, that's the part that drives me crazy. People, um, the trans Democrat election in Vermont has been living as a woman since 2015. Well, you know, it's like the latest fad for them. But, I mean, she just said it, though. You know, they want to be a woman because they realize men ain't shit. You know, it's really, it's like she says, deep down, every, every man deep down knows he's a worthless piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but anyway, she says women, in other words, don't have penis envy. Men have pussy envy. When the male accepts his passivity and defines himself as a woman, males as well as females think men are women and women are men and becomes a transvestite. He loses his desire to screw or do anything else for that matter and fulfills himself as a drag queen. He then achieves a continuous diffuse sexual feeling from, quote, being a woman. Screwing is for a man a defense against his desire to be female. I'm a, okay, did she call it? Did she call it? Is this not what we are dealing with right now? All this forcing themselves into women's spaces. All this dressing like women. Being mad because somebody won't call them she. And all this kind of shit. And want to say that, well, you know, you're a sis. And, you know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Because they try to say, horn in on the fact that they want to be a woman. And push you to the side by giving you some extra tag. And all this stuff. I'm like, this chick, I don't know how she, you know, was able to come up with this i don't know i wish i could have met her 
I really wish I could have met her. Um, I'm trying to see. What else did I see here? Oh, power and control. Unmasterful in his personal relations with women. The male attempts to master by the manipulation of money and everything controlled by money. In other words, of everything and everybody. Unable to give love or affection, he gives money. It makes him feel motherly. The mother gives milk, he gives bread. He is the breadwinner. And, you know, it's like, that's what she said. It's vagina and pussy envy, she said it. Honey, I'm like looking at this. I'm like, this chick is just off the chain. But it's like, but you know, isn't that what men do? The first thing they do, well, you know, I don't want her using my money. She's trying to use my money, my money for child support, my money for a date, my money for this. You know, they want to have the most money. It's like you got to die. You can't take the shit with you. What the fuck are you doing? And all these dudes, you know, they have millions of these white dudes, old wrinkly ass little dick white dudes, and they have billions of dollars. And you still got a little dick and you still can't fuck. So it's like the money that you got. I mean, that doesn't make you. Do, you know it better I mean it makes women want to be with you because you got some money but they don't want to be with you for you because you ain't shit just like she said so it's like you know you got these these thug dudes mad because Russell and CR got together and Russell got some change and you know, he got a million dollar contract CR got some change he got millions in the bank so it's like you know th th they're leveling the playing field and these guys feel like in a situation like that they could never measure up they could never have power over a woman who has her own stuff. That's why they're so angry at feminists. They're looking at money as being the way that they can control you and have power and feel like a man. And when a woman has better education, she has a better job, she has a fatter paycheck, she has a better car, she got a better crib, she got more credit, she got a black car that he don't have none. All this kind of stuff that where women are better, they can't stand it. And that's why they're so resentful of feminism. Because when a woman has her own and she demands that you come with an equal or a better amount and you know that you don't measure up as a man, you know that you are a pussy, then they feel inadequate. And so instead of dealing with their inadequacy and doing better, they just bow out and they try to make it your fault that they feel inadequate by saying, you know, that it's feminism and that women don't know how to be women and wives and shit anymore. Ain't nobody trying to do all that simple bullshit. I mean, exactly. That's the only thing that they have to to offer is money. So let me see. Let me I tag some other stuff, too. Let me see. I thought, wow, this is really interesting how it related, you know, to what I wanted to talk about. No, but I was learning the Fortnite dances, though. I can actually do it, too. All right. Let me see. Okay, here we go. And this is something that men are fighting against. He, she writes, competition, prestige, status, formal education, ignorance, and social and economic classes. Having an obsessive desire to be admired by women, but no intrinsic worth, the male constructs a highly artificial society, enabling him to appropriate the appearance of worth through money, prestige, high social class degrees professional position and knowledge and by pushing as many other men as possible down professionally socially economically and educationally the purpose of higher education is not to educate but to exclude as many as possible from various professions and that that's true i've always thought that because just because someone doesn't have a degree does not mean that they are not could not perform that position very well but by demanding that you have a degree even to be something like a fucking receptionist, you they eliminate a lot of people from even applying. So, you know, people and it, it, it gets to people if they can't afford to go to college anymore, which a lot of people cannot, then it basically cuts them out of the workforce. That's what it does. And it, it puts them in a lower socioeconomic class. Um, and they there they stay because they're limited by their lack of education. It's a real fucked up situation. But that's unless a person can start their own business and be successful at that um, or looks up on something where they get an internship or something like that. They're basically screwed unless you have some basic education. It used to be high school diploma. But now it's like you got to have at least a B.A. or a B.S. to get, you know, you get it your foot even in the door. So, um. Hold on, I'm looking for. 
Oh, okay, here she goes. She calls prevention of love and friendship. Men have contempt for themselves, for all other men whom they contemplate more than casually and whom they do not think are female. Russell Wilson, for example. And for all women who respect and pander to them, the insecure, approval-seeking, swinging, thrill-seeking female females have contempt for me and for the pandering I think this is it for men and for the pandering male females. In short, contempt is the order of the day. But love is not dependency or sex, but friendship. And therefore, love cannot exist between two males, between a male and a female, or between two females, one or both of whom is a mindless, insecure, pandering male. Like conversation, love can exist only between two secure, freewheeling, independent female females, since friendship is based upon respect, not contempt. And you have guys who are online talking about how they are in contempt of women and yet they want to sleep sleep with you. You know, how does that work? And you ladies want to be in a relationship with a man who, you know, if he's emotionally abusing you and verbally abusing you, that's his way of demonstrating his contempt for you. So many women don't get that, though. Oh, well, he didn't mean it. Well, you know, he was just upset. Well, he was just, no, he's totally disrespecting you right now. And you're not doing anything about you still staying with him. You're still giving him all the benefits of, it, of being a nice guy and treating you well and with respect while he's not doing that. I don't understand it. So that's why I was like, damn, she's like, um, you know, on that too. It's like you can't have a good relationship with somebody who doesn't respect you. It just doesn't happen. So then she goes down here. Then she talks about sexuality. Oh, my God. Girlfriend went in. For men, sex is not part of a relationship. On the contrary, it's a solitary experience, non-creative, a gross waste of time. The female can easily, far more easily than she may think, condition away her sex drive, leaving her completely cool and cerebral and free to pursue truly worthy relationships and activities. But the male who seems to dig women sexually and who seeks out constantly to arouse them stimulates the highly sexed female into frenzies of lust, throwing her into a sex bag from which few women ever escape. The lecherous male excited the lustful female. He has to. When the female transcends her body, rises above animalism, the male whose ego assists, consists of his dick will disappear. And that's what's happening. A lot of women, um, you know, they're not calling it wig town, but that's essentially what it is. Because women are like, you know, fuck all the dumb shit. Let me do me. And if some guy comes along, you know, it'll be fine. If not, then I'm fine being single. And that's terrifying to these to these guys who were depending on um, their sexual abilities to keep women, you know, keep women in line and keep women with them, doing for them, taking care of them, loving them, having their children and sexing them down. So if you're a woman to whom, you know, you have control over your sex drive, and you are like, you know, a mover and shaker. You, you know, decisive. You got good credit. You making some shit happen. You out there doing the damn thing. You are a huge threat to these guys. And that is why they attack feminism so much. Because these are the women who believe in advocating for themselves and in having equality and in not depending on a man to do for them anything. And then she's just going out making her own shit happen, making her own world. And it's like... When you understand the mentality of men and what they need to feel like men and you don't give it to them, they turn into MGTOWs because they're so angry. Everything that they thought that they were going to be getting from women, the support and the love and the attention and the affection and your life and everything that they thought they was going to be getting from you, they're not going to get unless they perform up to the standards that you demand. And they don't want to do that. They just want to get it just because they show up with their dick in their hand. And the women are like, fuck you. I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't even want you. And they can't stand it. They're really mad. So then she says, sex is the refuge of the mindless. And the more mindless the woman is, the more deeply embedded in the male culture she is. In short, the nicer she is, the more sexual she is. The nicest women in our society are raving sex maniacs. <coughs> but being just awfully, awfully nice, they don't, of course, transcend to fucking. That's uncouth. Rather, they make love. Commune by means of their bodies and establish sensual rapport. 
The literary ones are attuned to the throb of eros and acclaim a clutch upon the universe. The religious have a spiritual communion with the divine sensualism. Those are the ones running them to upstairs, uh, asses up to church, wearing crotchless panties and flashing the pastor and flipping out all, doing all these sexual moves and yelping and shit in the church aisles. The mystics merge with the erotic principle and blend with the cosmos, and the asses' heads contract their erotic selves. Wow. On the other hand, those females least embedded in the male culture, the least nice, those crass and simple souls who reduce fucking to fucking, are who are too childish for the grown-up world of suburbs, mortgages, mops, and baby shit, too selfish to raise kids and husbands, too uncivilized to give a shit for anyone's opinion of them, too arrogant to respect daddy. The greats are the deep wisdom of the ancients who trust only their own animal gutter instincts who equate culture with chicks whose soul diversion is prowling for emotional thrills and excitement, who are given to disgusting, nasty, upsetting scenes, hateful, violent bitches given to slamming those who unduly irritate them into the teeth, in the teeth, who would sink a shiv into a man's chest or ram an ice book up his ass as soon as they look at him, if they knew they could get away with it. In short, those who, by the standards of our culture, are scum. These females are cool and relatively cerebral and skirting asexuality. Wow. That's kind of deep, girlfriend. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This is the Scum Metaf Manifesto by Valerie Solanus that we're going over. And we're juxtaposing it against the principles of MGTOW. For those of you who just came in. And, you know, I was kind of pointing out some of the things that she was saying. How MGTOW and the trans movement are very closely related in that they both hate women and they're both men who seem to want to use women for their own benefit. Um, <clears throat> one in a, you know, sexual way and one in a hateful way. So, you know, even though they claim that, um, you know, they quote, feel like women, you don't feel like women because you don't even know, have a fuck with the idea of what that is. You made up some shit in your mind. I mean, how do women go, you know, feel like a woman? You just, you either are or you ain't. And so when you ain't, you can't walk around and you talk about you feel like you are one. And you feel like a donut too. Shit. Fuck that shit. So then she, she threw under the category of hatred and violence. The male is eaten up with tension, with frustration at not being female and not being capable of ever achieving satisfaction or pleasure of any kind. He's eaten up with hate. Not rational hate that's directed at those who intentionally abuse or insult you, but irrational, indiscriminate hate. Hatred at bottom of his own worthless self. Gratuitous violence, besides proving that he's a man, serves as an outlet for his hate. And in addition, the male being capable only of sexual responses and needing very strong stimuli to stimulate his half-dead self, provides himself with a little sexual thrill. Now, when you look at this hatred and violence and look at how that is being played out in Chicago. Let's just let's just narrow this down and talk about Chicago. And then we'll talk about a bigger framework where, you know, black men especially are murdering black women every time you turn around. Three, four, five women, you know, dead every day in this country. Real women, not trans women. OK, real women being killed by real men. So when you have this kind of situation, when she talks about the hatred and violence and the tension that they feel and that they're, you know, eaten up with hate, would that not have some validity? I mean, think about it. Why would you hate somebody just because they're not from your block? Why would you hate a woman who tells you she has a boyfriend or a husband and she doesn't want to give you your number so you want to kill her? You want to chase her down the street. You want to chase down teenage girls. You want to lock them up in rooms and sell their bodies against their will. What is that if that is not hate? What is that then? So, you know, I mean, when I was reading this and I started thinking of all the different situations where what she's saying is applies, I mean, you cannot deny that that's what's going on. Men worldwide hate women. And it's coming up, you know, in, 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 in these kind of ways. It's like, you know, anybody who has, who thinks they're valuable will also feel that other people are valuable. And so that per you won't do harm to them, right? Only people who think their lives are worthless believe that other people's lives are worthless as well. You hate yourself, so you hate others. You have no value, so you feel like others have no value either. That's what's going on with men. 
you know i'm like wow she is really and then then she puts down here she's talking about death and disease and she says that males like death death excites him sexually and already dead inside he wants to die and how many die guys you know walk around talking about you know i just died in because you know blah 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 i mean it well not just in movies but i mean obviously that's what's going on out in the street because these dudes you know they just want to they be fighting and shoot, shooting up each other and all this stuff i mean it's like you know, i was reading the statistics about how many young men have, have young black men have died in chicago and it's just ridiculous it's like they're in the prime of their life and they're wiped off the face of the earth so they have no contribution to society nothing that they could ever change and grow and and produce and build nothing it's just they're just cut out of life altogether like they never even existed because they're so young and it's just a shame you know that's just a shame that makes no sense to me that somebody would hate themselves that much that um that they would treat themselves like that and treat others like that. So, I don't know. She goes on and on. I mean, girlfriend, woof, she was, she was on one when she wrote this. But um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, kind of go over that. And uh, where's my fan? It's hot. Hold on a second. okay exactly they don't measure up and that's what she's saying you know that that for them um life is kind of meaningless and so if they feel like their life is meaningless of course they would notice that your life feels your life is not worth anything either the men kept what I don't know what you're talking about. If Deb knows about these Islander women who had to kill their offspring because the men kept, oh, warring. Oh, that's what she said, warring. Oh, you're starting wars and stuff? So they got rid of all the males? I mean, you know, if all you can do is, is, is make violence and kill people, that's like your sole purpose for living, you don't have nothing else to do with your time, then, um, you know, that's kind of a problem but you guys you know you ladies somebody sent me a link and they were talking about um how some guy they broke up right she sent me this link on facebook was it facebook no it was in my email she sent me this link and talking about just the other day since we did the show on tuesday um this guy and girl broke up and she came to the house with her stepfather to get her stuff and he shot her multiple times in the face right in front of her stepfather. And then the police were chasing him. He stabbed the police dog numerous times. The dog has made it and is expected to live. But, you know, those are police officers. So, you know, he going to jail for the rest of his life. Even though it's a, it's a dog, I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it, those are working animals. They work right alongside a police officer, and they are considered a member of the police force. So you tried to kill a, ca- a cop. That's what you did. And then he killed the girl. And, you know, right in front, it's like everybody saw him do it. So it wasn't like he's going to say that, you know, he was innocent or anything. And it's like, you know, what we were just talking about the other day. If you have a breakup with a dude, do not go anywhere where he is. Don't go to his house. Don't get in his car. Don't let him in your car. Don't let him in your house. If he has some of your shit, just let it stay there. Let it stay there. You can buy it again. Everything that we have except for maybe pictures. But, you know, these days people have pictures on their phones and shit. So, I mean, you know, and if it's like your computer, I mean, you should be backing your computer up to the cloud. Everyone should do that. You know, you can get OneDrive. You can get Dropbox. You can get, you know, whatever. They have all these things that's free. You should be backing up your your files that you really need, documents and photos, to your cloud server and save them there if you have to leave your computer leave the bitch okay get another one and then you can download your shit from the cloud and pick up right where you left off you don't go putting yourself in a situation going into storage units and off to you know in the car rides up to the mountains and in the dark in the woods for a walk and all this old shit with some guy that you is that you broke up with even if he does seem like a normal dude these dudes snap because they feel like you're property 
okay? And you, you can't do that. You ladies, you got to be more sensible. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, he would never do anything like that to me. And all the women that said that are now dead. You know, all kinds of fucked up with acid and shit. You know, so it's like, you know, don't do that. Do not be that silly. You know, protect yourself. You are on the Debsterism channel here on Twitch and on YouTube. Become a subscriber or a follower on Twitch. I'll be on Twitch on Saturday or Sunday. I don't know which day yet. But, you know, we have shit talking Saturday or shit talking Sunday. Whichever one I happen to make it to. Maybe even both. And, um, uh... Is it I'm here on YouTube, you know, doing both platforms on Tuesday and Thursday and sometimes another day in between when I just, the mood strikes. So be sure to press, press that subscribe button and, you know, it's over there. Press the subscribe button and then click the little bell symbol that you'll see so you get an automatic notification to your phone of when the show goes live, okay? So that's what you got to do. Become a subscriber and please share a link or two. That was very helpful. People have been really good about sharing links lately. And uh, we've seen a lot of growth at, uh, up to 13,000 now and climbing. So trying to make it to 15 and then the next big goal is 20. And uh, starting with two years ago, I had like five. So this, this is not bad. It's not bad growth. All right. So what do you guys want to talk about? You know, I briefly talked about the MGTOW philosophy. But I was talking about it specifically as it relates to the Scum Manifesto and Valerie Solanus' um, assessment of men and their motivations for doing what they do. So I'm not really talking about, you know, the grand scope of, of MGTOW because I've already done that. But um, I just thought it was very interesting how the two kind of link together. And these guys, all the stuff that she talks about, how they're angry and resentful at women, is just right there in black and white. You cannot avoid it very interesting so anybody got um oops anybody got something they want to add something that they want to say never let a man know how he can affect you that is true because with a lot of women wear their heart on their sleeve and they don't have no game one of the best ways a woman can get control of her emotions and her face is to learn to play poker that's that phrase of poker face that is y'all need to have that so that no matter what he says you keep your expression the same you don't reward him with upsetness tears raise voices or nothing you just you know this is like nothing he gets nothing did you discuss the difference between MGTOW incels and true force loneliness um, I have in separate videos. I just did one on incels a month or two ago and uh, and talked about their silly butts and all the violence that they're wrecking and havoc they're wrecking on the world. You know, it's just really when you just look at me and they, you know, I mean, you guys just normal. You guys are like, like uh, the men who are normal, you know, just regular dudes. You guys are like a dying breed. 90% of men are all fucked up in the head. There's something wrong with them. I don't know what it is, if it's the testosterone. There's like anger management issues, poor understanding, entitlement, mental illness, histrionic personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, sociopath, psychopath. I mean, all kind of crazy shit. Just unbelievable. Yeah, the kids are being killed by their fathers. You know why they're being killed? Because the fathers don't want to pay child support. So y'all need to not be having these motherfuckers babies. I keep telling you that. And they get mad. They kill you and they kill the kids too. And if your mama's there, your sister, whatever, they're going to kill her and her kids too. So, you know, y'all get, you, I know everybody's like, well, you know, I want to have a family. I want to do this. I want to do that. Take your ass to a sperm bank and get you one. Don't be having a baby by no these knuckleheads because they just act stupid. Let's see. What is it? My seven-year-old son acts just like his dad. He is unruly at school. His dad talks to him about adult stuff. He now says nobody loves him after hearing his dad say this. How do I raise a good man? Wow. So his father, is his father like active in his life? And see, this is, this is what I'm talking. People are like, well, you know, children need their father. No, they don't. 
They need a man in their life to have to have some sense and that's going to, you know, mold them into a positive, you know, resourceful contributor to society type of man. Not just because the dude, you know, jetted out some sperm and made a baby. That does not make a man a good father. It just makes him the sperm donor. This little boy, he just, and it's like they always want to attack the kids. They always want to fuck up the kids or hurt the kids and do some kind of mental or emotional damage to the children because they are angry at the mother. And they use the children to do it. That's why, you know, they want to kill the kids and stuff. I have a video. Your kid is a little bit young, but I mean, you can't start, you know, kind of trying to counteract some of that nonsense. There's a video. Um, a teenage boy, it shows this little boy leaned up against the wall. It's like a teenage boy asks, how do I become a good man? Something like that. And um, it's, you know, just search for become a good man on, on the channel search. And you, it should pop up. And uh, this kid who was 16 wrote me saying he was surrounded by ancient men. And he didn't want to be like that. He wanted to be a guy who was sensible and, you know, about something. And he asked me for some help because he didn't have any men in his life. He only had a bunch of women. And he's like, they had knuckleheads too. I was like, oh, my God, this poor little boy. But he had enough sense to write to me. So I devoted an entire video to help that young man by giving him some principles of manhood, um, some things to strive to accomplish and to do. And if you look at that, you can start your little boy on some of those tasks. Now, one of the main things you need to do is make his little ass do some chores. Make him learn how to take care of himself and don't treat him like a baby. That's the thing. The main thing I think most women do is they have sons that they don't make do shit. And so the boys grow up to feel like women are supposed to be taking care of them, giving them money, all kind of stuff. Make his little ass do some chores. But yeah, find that video. And then if you have some questions, you know, put it under the video and then I will address them there. I told a guy I prefer phone calls over text and he started FaceTiming me. Oh, I don't have Apple, so I don't do FaceTime. The Nignog panty, as you want to avoid that. Well, maybe he did have a tra traumatic childhood, but who cares? You know, everybody's got trauma and drama in their childhood. Ain't nobody made it to adulthood unscathed. You know, everybody's had drama. But, um, you know, one young lady posted on the wall, I don't remember. Was that you, Crystal? I don't remember who it was now. I'm sitting there. About how their stepfather talked about how he was jetted his sperm into some woman was trying to make him pregnant or something. And I was like, okay, what kind of inappropriate conversation is this to talk to with your stepdaughter? You don't need to be talking about you jet, you know, jetting anything into some woman's body. What is wrong with you? See, mm -mm, if that was my daughter, he would have been stabbed. I'm telling you, I just love the thought of stabbing motherfuckers. It's like you just you just do doing too much. You need to talk to my daughter about nothing to do with your dick. Nothing. Nothing. Ever. Just too much. Just doing too fucking much. <laughs> you can't complain about all the dust. <laughs> ah, that's too funny. Yes, honey, these dusties are just a little bit too too much for Deb. I start sneezing and shit. Did I say FaceTime? You mean can make an appointment for that? Yes, girl, because your hair be sticking all eh, looking cray cray. No makeup on. Sleep in your eyes and shit. Drool from your sleep <laughs> from sleeping on the side. That won't be cute. That's not cute. I don't know where her mother, you know, because I asked her, I don't even know how old she was when, when he was saying this. I mean, she might have been an adult. You know, I don't know. But I don't even really care. Because it, it, no matter what, she could have been 80 and he could have been 100. It's still your stepdaughter and you still don't need to be talking to your stepdaughter about your dick under any circumstances whatsoever. And so that's where I was coming from. And, you know, it wasn't like, you know, I mean, the mother could have been anywhere in the next room. I mean, we don't know. You know, I mean, it's not to say that the mother did anything wrong. The person who was doing something wrong was the stepfather. I'm telling you, that's why I never got married. If my husband died, I was just, no, no nigga was even coming to my house. Fuck that shit. I see you trying to say something rude or unsavory to my daughter, look at her crazy, or put your hands on her, you're dead. You're dead. Your mother going to be going to your funeral because you dead. That's just it. There's no coming back from that. A black female celebrity got her kid mother and sister killed because her ex was mad that she left him. Yeah, I mean, that happens. 
And it happens, you don't even have to be a celebrity, that shit happens. It's all over the Google. I mean, you just Google it. All races are men, too. And, uh, you know, they just go something about them and rejection. They don't seem to be able to handle it. That's what we're going to finally talk about that one day soon, too. Maybe next week. Or maybe on the weekend. Um, and talk about, you know, why men can't stand rejection. And what is it? Why are they little feeling so fucking sensitive? It's like they can take rejection from, you know, they don't get an apartment. They don't get a car loan. They don't get a mortgage loan. They don't get the job. They can take all those rejections. But let a woman reject them. And they just lose their goddamn mind. This go crazy. We don't know where her mother was. We don't know. Like I said, I don't even know how old she was when this happened. So, um, I cannot uh, answer that question because I just she just put it up there, you know, today or yesterday or something. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen, you know, 20 years ago. I don't know. I was just like turned off by the fact that they were, you know, that was her stepfather. And he had the nerve to be talking to her about something sexual. I thought that was highly inappropriate. My question is dead. Why do they not understand why they are getting rejected? You're at the bottom of the totem pole. Nobody wants you. And a guy rejected a guy last week and said, he said, I would die alone. Good. You know what? It's like, oh, Deb, not dead. Oops, sorry. (laughs) Ha, ha. My thing is this, I would rather be alone than be with you. See, that's the part they don't understand. It's like you think that, you know, being with you is such a fucking prize. You know how much work women have to do when they get in a relationship? You better love the shit out of that motherfucker. That's all I'm going to say because you're going to be having dishpan hands, not getting no sleep, raising his fucking kids, and having stretch marks and all kind of shit is going to be going on. And then, you know, that's the idea of being a wife and a mother that women be chasing after. I don't get it personally. I'm like, shit, I'm glad I only had one. Oof, Lord have mercy. Y'all with two, three, four, five kids, I don't get that at all. I mean, more power to you, blessings and all of that, you know, because you tougher than me. I can't do it. Can't do it. Cannot. Can't do it. Yes, they do think they have a right to us. And, uh, you know, that's really unfortunate, too, because, um, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, where did you get the idea that you're entitled to a woman? I mean, just because you were a guy, I mean, that doesn't entitle you anything. You got to, you know, you got to perform circus tricks and shit to get a woman's attention. Unless, I mean, you want like a quality woman. You just want some like little ghetto hoochie mama or something. Then you don't have to do too much. Give her a blunt. She cool. But, you know, you want a woman who's who's about something and who's, you know, on a path to something that you can bring home and show to your your parents proudly and bring to your work functions and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, you got to come with something. You can't just show up and just and have a fucked up attitude. Nobody, well, you know, women these days, we're doing so much by ourselves. We don't need to deal with some man with a fucked up attitude in order to say that we have a relationship. So that's the part that these guys, you know, they want to threaten you by saying, well, you know, you're going to end up single alone with a bunch of cats. Okay. And (laughs) where's the downside to that? I'm still waiting to hear the bad part. What, 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 what? I don't get it. So, um, I don't know. Those pygmies need to be rounded up and sent to the moon. (laughs) Well, that, I don't know. The moonlight people might not want them either. It's a sad, she says, it's a sad day when um, dusties don't know they're dusties, but they're infinite in number. Yes, honey. And a female YouTuber said that men don't love children the same. I'm starting to think she was right. Well, they, that's definitely true. And what it is, I'll tell you what this is. I've said this before in my videos. Men don't love the children in general. I mean, you know, there are, like I said, there's always exceptions because there are a few guys who are different, a few. The majority are afraid to be too different because they want, they don't want to be too far outside the box of what they think is manhood. And that box is defined by their social circle. So the social circle for guys who are uh, like uh, doctors and lawyers and judges and stuff like that, 
their standard of manhood is going to be different than somebody who's slinging rocks and living in a hood and who runs with gangbangers. His standard of man, you see what I'm saying? So there's different levels and standards of manhood that guys are going to try to achieve and they're going to model themselves after based on their social connections. That's the best way I can put it. So when you have a guy who is a dusty, his idea of what is a man is going to be formed by other dusties because that's who's in his social circle. So they're going to be dusties together. And those, if you step outside the whatever the definition of dusty is for that social circle, that guy is going to be called a mangina, a simp, a wimp, pussy whooped, dumb, you know, all kind of stuff because he dared to be different than all the other guys. So it's very important to men that they be accepted by the guys in their social circle, right? So that is why they, that's, that's how they define manhood. So a man who is in the circles where they don't, you know, appreciate being a father, where everybody's different and dodging and running out on their kids, he's gonna be ashamed to be the kind of father who's more involved with his kids because then he's not gonna fit in. He won't be able to say, well, you know, that bitch, my baby mama, this, that, and join in that negative conversation with the others. He's going to be too different, and they live in fear of being different. So, and with men, it's like they don't feel about the kid the way that women do feel about their children. Men feel about their child the way that they feel about the child's mother. Okay, that's why they want to kill the kid because they're angry at the mother. So they want to kill everybody. Are you making the, you see what I'm saying here? A lot of people are like, I don't understand what you're talking about. But it's like, if he really loves this woman, then he's going to really love that child because they're a package deal. And if he really is angry and can't stand the, ba the mother of this kid, he's going to have a, he's going to really struggle with being able to stay, be around and look at that child and spend time with it because it might remind him of the mother. It's too much like the relationship, whatever. But that's why you see a lot of these dudes that, you know, they can't stand the mother and then they don't want nothing to do with the kid either. I just want people to understand that. To try to be as civil, we create as civil a relationship with your child's father as you possibly can. You know, if you want to cuss and scream and stuff, you know, vent away from your child and away from him. But, you know, try to keep things smooth and even for your kid's sake. Because as soon as y'all start fussing and beefing and stuff, he's going to take that out on the child. That's how they are. They're very immature and stupid. But, you know, this is something that you have power and control over. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. It means you got to bite the bullet and swallow a lot of bullshit that you might not want to swallow. But a lot, you know, pick your battles. That's the best thing I can tell you. Pick your battles. If it's not something that's going to matter 10 years from now, then it don't matter now either. Just let it go. Because, you know, they're going to be stupid. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay, so let me scroll down and see. How you feel about people dating people with depression? Oh, no, 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 no. If you're depressed, you need to deal, work on yourself because you get yourself together. Because as I said at the top of the video, okay, you have to be a whole and happy person and before you can get into a relationship with another whole and happy person. If you are damaged, if you're, you know, hurting, if you're depressed, you're not, you're not fully present. You're not really there. You have nothing to give anybody in a relationship. You barely can give to yourself. So it's like, what, what are you doing? You're just trying to put you, position yourself so you can use somebody and suck all the life out of them to help you ease your depression. That's not fair. And of course, if someone cares about you, they're going to want to be there for you. But that's a one-way street. And at some point, people are going to get sick of that shit. And then they're going to leave you. Why set yourself up for that? That's going to make you go back into more of a deeper depression. So remember that. Unless you're whole and happy yourself, you have no business trying to be in a relationship with anyone. Get yourself straight first. Be whole and happy by yourself. And then you can attract a whole and happy person. Y'all can join hands. Let's go skipping down the lane. Dee -dee 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 -dee. With big old tooth, you know, big old toothy smiles. And then you will be all right. Now, you should never feel bad for rejecting a man. Are Capricorn men worth dating? I don't know. I haven't met any. But, you know, I'm a Leo. So we don't really. They too full of shit for me. My uncle used to walk around in these Speedo draws in front of me. Oh, my God. These big stomach and nasty bikini curls. Why did he do that? How old were you? Oh, you were a teenager? Oh, yeah, he was flashing you. That was totally inappropriate. These men, okay, why did your aunt make him put on some fucking clothes? Oh, 
my God. Marriage and motherhood is not for every woman. I think that's what you meant to say, Crystal. Yeah, well, yeah, one kid is plenty. Dusties have all those requirements. <laughs> yes, this is my favorite t-shirt. Well, next to my one, um, my um, public enemy one. I love that one too. It's not for everyone. Okay, that's what she meant. That's what I thought. All right, I'm screaming. I'm, I'm rolling down. Cats are cool. Yeah, but I'm allergic, so I can't really have a cat. They're cool, though. I used to do seminars. I haven't really done any lately because, shit, I be running my mouth all the time on YouTube. Every time I'm on to doing a video, it's a seminar. I used to do some around here in the Bay Area. All the marriage material men I see are married. Dating nowadays to feel to me like I'm shopping in a thrift store. Wow. Trying to find the best looking used appliance. Well, that's pretty much the way it is. That's pretty sure the way it is. But just because a man is married, don't think that means his, his wife is happy. She just married. Okay? So keep that thought in mind. Because a lot of them women are miserable as fuck. They can't wait. They itching to get a divorce. But they wait till the kids a little older. Until they get their money right. Or they just scared to be by themselves. And they women have all kinds of excuses why they stay in unhappy situations. So if you rejected somebody that was 41 with a three-month-old baby, what? And he said the baby mama tricked him into having a baby. Yeah, okay, nigga. Yeah, what the fuck ever? Like, you too, you too, you too young and inexperienced. You don't know how to strap up. You don't know how to take your care of things. See, they are trying to blame the woman. You made a decision to do that. You did that to yourself. I'm glad you, you though, dumped him next to his ass because he sounds stupid. Anybody who doesn't want to take control over the, you know, responsibility for his dick choices is no kind of man. That's no kind of man. Yeah, I know that thrift store was fun. Calvin, it was funny. Yeah, I don't know, you guys. I just, um, and, you know, I really want people to understand when I'm talking about this kind of stuff, what I'm doing, I'm not telling you not to have a relationship. I would never do that. What I'm telling you is not to get involved in a relationship with the wrong dude. So I spend all this time exposing the things that you need to look at to understand what kind of man it is that you're dealing with, where his head really is, how his behavior and his lifestyle choices and the situation that he brings, the baggage or whatever you want to call it, how that's going to affect you should you become involved with him or marry him. That's why I do this. So, you know, and you are the ultimately the only one who can decide if the stuff that he's, you know, given is something that you want to deal with. I mean, you have to decide that. I would not want to do it like the dude 41 with the three-month-old. See, no, 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 no. We ain't doing no pampers, pablum, and shots and all that shit. No. Been there, done that, done. And, uh, but, you know, so there's some women who might not mind. I mean, maybe they have a you know, four or five-year-old kid. They're a little younger. And they would like to have, you know, a baby around occasionally. They don't want to have one themselves. But that might not be a deal breaker for them. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. You know, you have to look at this. I just point out, well, it could impact your life like this. Because if you marry him and he's got big child support payments up the yin-yang, or he's behind the child support payments, or he's behind in anything, once you become married and that property money that you make becomes community property, then his child support is going to be coming out of your check. So you need to be aware of that. So these are the kind of things that I point out to women so you just don't go blindly, oh my God, I'm in love, you know, and he wants to marry me, oh, and then you go get yourself in some shit and, you know, be trying to, um, and trying to figure out how to get out of it. Oh, you're a therapist and tell the clients, ha ha, oh, cussing and all, they probably be like, oh my God, my virgin ears. She was paying for a dude's number and he only contacted her through Facebook and called her on a block number and he's living with his baby mama. Wow. She dumb. Man, we need a sign that says she dumb and just flash across the screen. She dumb. 
Exactly. It's like that's everybody's like, you know, well, she's married, you know, these men are married and stuff. It's like, you know, you have to understand just because someone is married doesn't mean they're happy. You know, more single women are happy. I mean, they might want somebody, but they're not like, you know, like drowning in depression and, you know, sitting there crying and feeling frustrated and overburdened with work and stuff. And it's like, I saw this show, child, you know, I love to watch stuff in Korean stuff, right? So I'm watching the show. They have like this therapy show. They have like celebrity people and, you know, different people to come on with the actual therapist. And so people write in letters and then they read the letter. And uh, then the people who the letter is about and who wrote the letter come on to the show, right? So this one lady, she's pregnant. She's only been married four years or something. And she's pregnant with a fourth kid. Okay, and her husband still makes her work in the restaurant that they have with the kids. And the youngest was like, I don't know, 18 months or something. And the oldest was like seven or something. And then, um, or, I don't know, five or, I don't know, some, but he could like walk around and dress himself and all this kind of stuff, right? And so then she got the other little one who was like three. And then she had the, you know, year old or 12, 15 month or whatever. And then she was pregnant. And this motherfucker, her husband, sitting up there talking about how, you know, he gets, he goes out and plays golf and does these different things and leaves her at the restaurant with all them kids to take care of all the business and the kids by herself. And, uh, you know, the, the therapist was looking at him like, you know, they try to be polite because, you know, the Korean culture, Asian culture, everybody's polite because, you know, you know, black people would be like, motherfucker, what kind of bullshit is this? But, you know, they're not going to say things like that. They make little polite jokes and and things like that they don't really go in on people but I was sitting there looking at that and I'm like okay this woman she was sitting there crying and she's pregnant and she got already got three sons pregnant with the fourth son what in the world is this woman gonna do she's stuck she's stuck even if she did leave him she got to drag along four kids with her what's she gonna do I'm telling you, there's just no way in this world I would leave him and them boys and be up the fuck up out of there. I'd be living in a hut somewhere in Indonesia. They would never find my ass. I just, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Okay, so let's see. I'm married, but my husband's career keeps him away 75% of the time. Take your time with marriage. It's a full-time job, 24-7. Hell yes, it sure is. She show it sure is. Well, it is an ultimate goal for a lot of women. They just want that ring. I mean, think about the letter we got the, we did on Tuesday, on Tell It Tuesday. The chick who you know wants to give her money for a mortgage um, to help this guy buy a house if he gives her a ring. I'm like, girl, you crazy. He ain't marrying you. He, you've been together seven years. He ain't show no signs of interest in it. And do you want to give him some money? Fuck that. I would be spending my money. I'd be going somewhere or on a vacation or something. I want four kids, but I think I might settle for just two. Girl, you better, when you start, you know, I, this is what usually cures people of that. Look at how much daycare costs. <laughs> Look at how much daycare costs. And imagine having to pay that for three or four kids. Your ass will quickly decide one is plenty. I'm just like, I'm telling you. I don't know how much it is in other places, but around here for an infant, you could easily be paying fifteen to two thousand dollars a month for somebody to watch your baby. And people are like, well, damn, I barely make it that much, you know, bring home that much. Yep, and all your money will be going for daycare. You know, because you don't want to just put the baby with anybody. That's how people come back and the baby be dead and all fucked up and stuff. Because you just, you know, some crackhead person want to charge you $30 a week or something. And then you think you're saving some money and then your kid is suffering. So you put them in a reputable place, you know, it's licensed and got all the proper fire permits and everything. And um, and then you wonder, you know, I mean, you got you to pay out the ass. But you got to buy the disposable diapers. You got to bring them food and all this stuff. No, that's too much money. It costs too much money. Yeah, it's like more than tuition. Uh, people do afford it. it de- like I said, it depends on what part of the country you went. Here in the Bay Area, where you can rent a one-bedroom apartment for you know two thousand dollars a month, then you can get a daycare for your infant. Now, I'm not talking about once they go to like preschool. Infant daycare is anywhere between twelve hundred and thousand dollars a month. 
$900 a month and your son is 18? Well, see, there you go. And you still remember, huh? I'm telling you. Now, you know, my daughter is 24, 24. And um, the most I remember paying for it, uh, for it was 500 And that was back then. So, you know. People are like, you know what I'm saying? You talking about you got to be having all these fantasies about what kind of kids you want. Y'all better do some crunch, some numbers, as they say, and you get to see. And that's just, um, you know, that's just the daycare. You still got to have, you know, medical insurance for them. You still got to feed them. You still got to clothe them. You know, you got to have enough space for them. So you got to get a bigger place. All commas, you know, they got medical insurance co-payments because babies go to the doctor all the fucking time. And, you know, I mean, it's just a very expensive venture yeah see, so it goes down a little bit once they get into preschool you know they, it goes down a little bit but still you know five hundred dollars i was paying because i wanted to have a you know a nice place to be in with this lady that really you know uh i really liked her program but shit Your hairdresser's husband got into an argument with you because you said you didn't want any more kids. Why is that his business? Why are you worried about what I do with my womb? Oh, he would have got cussed out. Told your girlfriend, you need to get your, get your husband up out of my pussy. That's what I would have told her. It's like, you know, just, just let's just be blunt here. Your motherfucker is doing too much. Worrying about what goes in my pussy and what comes out of it. And she would have quickly sent him on his way. Ooh, nigga. Oh no, he uh, they both would have got their feelings hurt because see, she was supposed to check him on that. There shouldn't have been an argument. The first time he said anything, even alluding to that, she would have been like, come here, uh, let's have a conversation. And then she's supposed to shut that shit down. Especially say she's at your place of business. And you know, he's in there talking to your clients about their sex life. Where they do that at? No. Yeah, I mean, around here, just these people, these um, tech people make that kind of money so they can afford it. But I'm like, Shh, fuck it. If I, you know, I, the way that I am now, the, the economy here, there'd be no way I would have had a kid. I just, just no way. It's too much money. It's too much money. It's not, I mean, you know, she was cute and everything when she was little, but no, I don't think so. It's never a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, we never have a dull moment around here. And, you know, last week we was like all, I don't know, what did we do? We did like a free-for-all. It's kind of the same thing now. It was kind of topical, at least for a minute. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. Yeah, I remember seeing the sign, you know, they said, they said, because they were trying to talk about how black women are involved in eugenics. And this guy, this church, had put up with big billboards that said, you know, the most dangerous place for a black child is in a black woman's womb. I'm like, yeah, the most dangerous place for a black child is in a black man's dick, which is really where they should stay. Some of their cousins have between five and ten children, but they live off benefits. What? Why would you have so many kids? I'm too vain. I was like, you know, I don't want my body changed that much. A little bit, but you know, you can exercise that shit back to, you know, back to where it's going to be. But you got, you know, five, ten kids, shit's all stretched out now. Permanently, no, I'm cool, I'm good. Then you have to have surgery. Yeah, my daughter announced to me the other day that she wasn't having no kids. I'm like, good. You will not hear any complaints from me about that. Uh, yes, that's a too nosy, but, you know, I was 24. I had plenty of fun traveling all over the place, being wild and crazy. You might not look, know it to look at this face, but I had a good time. One of my friends was a flight attendant, and we went everywhere. We would fly in for a party on Saturday night and fly out the next day and that's what we did we did we, we did that for years she worked for continental so everywhere continental went we went because they had them 50 dollars buddy passes honey i would be springing 50 dollars every time i could turn around but the doctor sculpted you back into shape well see that's what i mean that's what you got to do 
But you know, a lot of these women don't have the money for all of that. And they just keep having baby after baby after baby after baby after baby. I'm like, mm-mm. I like babies and everything, but I only like it when they're other people's. Because, you know, I like to hold it and like to give them back. It's like, oh, here, they start hollering or shit on themselves. Oh, here's your mama. Here go your daddy. Bye-bye. <laughs> that's, that's me. Yeah, puppies are really cute. Girl, if you want a kid and you don't want to put up with a baby daddy, go to a sperm bank. I'm telling you, that's the move to make. That is the move to make. So you guys, you know, need to um, supply some uh, topics for Topic Thursday. Shit, I'm tired of doing all the work by myself. I always have to do all the research, and now you want me to do the topic, find the topic too? Y'all need to send in some ideas. Write to me. Survive. Let me put it in here. And I have to say, too, somebody, I deleted that comment because it pissed me off. I forgot what video I had done. And somebody put, oh, I see you've been listening to uh, K something. See, anyway, I knew who she was talking about. And I'm like, no, nah, bitch, you got the shit confused. She used to follow me. Okay, she was all over my blog and all over my Facebook page. This is the original right here. I don't follow nobody. They follow and imitate me. And that's the part that people have confused. So when people go and they imitate what you do and they regurgitate what you say and rewrite what you already wrote, then, you know, people who don't know about that history automatically assume that, you know, they were the originators. No, that's me. Okay, that's me. And it's like, you know, I'm older than most of these people. They, they, I've been doing this more years than they are old. Okay, so ain't nobody copying nothing here. I don't copy other people. They copy me. So I just want to put that out there because I want to um, make that very clear, you know. Yeah, people be trying to bring drama. You know, that was some old bitch shit. I would delete I don't even remember who, what video it was under, but I saw it. I was like, oh, hell no. We know I don't say their names on my channel, though you will never hear that here. Someone may tell you privately, but I will not have that on my channel. I do not promote people who copy me and try to bite my shit. Oh, I used to work as a, in the legal field. I worked as a legal secretary when I was in college, and then I got my paralegal certificate after I finished, and uh, and then I, uh, you know, take typing tests. You know, I used to type over 100 words a minute when I was young. I still type in the 90s, so inaccurately. I would go to a sperm bank, but my family is from Somalia and religious, and explain to them how I had my kid is too much. I'd have to completely disconnect. Why do they need to know how you had your child? Why is that their business? Why would you tell them that? Just tell them that it's none of their business. You know, I mean, just because they're your relatives does not mean they need to know everything about your sex life and everything about your choices in your life. You're an adult, okay? So you have the right to tell them that we need to have some boundaries here. This is my child, and what happens to my child is my business. Either you like the kid or you don't, but I mean, you know, that's it. That's the extent of your your knowledge and involvement in my decisions. As long as you don't be asking them for some money and shit, you know what I mean? You got your shit, you handle it by yourself, then that's fine. You don't need to tell them anything. It's none of their business what you do. Just type your stuff and get, honey, it's nothing like typing fast. It's good because, you know, when you be on the phone and people be talking shit, right, you can be taking down just like, like transcribing everything that they say. And they don't even know that you're doing it. It's like, oh, well, let me, let me, let's coach you. On August 1st, 2015, you said, 
Yeah, exactly. You just show up with a baby. I mean, tell them you adopted or some shit. I mean, what? I mean, you know what I mean? They don't need to know all the details of your life. I don't understand why you feel like you have to tell them that. That's not their business. Do my fiance's family members have the right to start drama over our no kids policy at the wedding? Oh, let's talk about that because that's one of my favorite topics. People who want to have, okay, what you do is you adult, you write the, uh, you know, invitation. You don't say no kids, that's rude. What you say is, this is an elegant uh, and romantic affair for adults only. You count, you know, you put it in some phrase like that. But it's like, you know, this is the thing about people when they want to bring their kids, especially if you're having a sit down thing or, you know, something like this catered where you have to pay by the people. Unless they're going to unask the money for the food that those little motherfuckers are going to be eating up that you don't want to be there, then they have no business trying to infringe on your dime. But the bottom line is, if his family members want to start drama, just don't invite them. That would be my solution. You don't have to come, you know. So we wanted you to come, but you got to come without your kids so get a babysitter. If that's not what you want to do, then you and the kids stay home. Those are your two choices. Now, you know, this is going to be what for him to deal with, though. Um, so he's going to have to, you know, man up. They're very enmeshed. Well, no, you got to, I mean, just because that's the tradition to be all code of in and every up, but everybody's mixed, doesn't mean that you have to follow suit. Okay, this is your life. Okay, young lady, this is your life life it is your decision what you share with anyone i don't care if it's your mother about your life that's totally your decision and no one else's mm -mm. you were medical transcriber oh god that was all them big words Yeah, but I mean, really, I mean, really, you know, your kids, I mean, they scream and they cry and they want to run around and disturb everything and they make noise and they pull shit and break shit. You know, what I mean, they just are just a pain in the ass and people always want to bring their kids every fucking place. I hate it when you even go to like you go to a bar, you know, in California, they have this rule. If the bar serves food, like in a restaurant bar, instead of keeping their little rugrats over there in the restaurant part, these stupid ass parents want to bring their kids into the bar area now let me tell you what happened i was at tgi fridays one time in pleasanton when i used to work out there and this place that you said it's, it's closed now santa rita so i meet you know with a bunch of people from my job and we up there in the bar and this lady comes in there with her kid now we're adults right we saying fuck shit all this old shit do you know this bitch had the nerve to come over to me and say you need to watch your name because my child is here now Y'all know me. Y'all been knowing me for a minute here. And you know I went smooth the fuck off on her. It's like, bitch, you don't tell me shit what to do with my fucking mouth. You chose to bring your fucked up kid into a bar where adults are drinking and have, and talking shit. And you want to try to regulate what the fuck we say? Just for that, I'm going to cuss even louder. I'm going to say even more. And she got her kid and she left. And see, that's what she should have done. But see, that when that law passed, I was so upset. I was like, who thought this was a good idea? Kids don't need to be around people drinking. They need to be in the restaurant part, not in the bar part. But that these stupid people in California made that a law. And so people bring their fucked up little brats into the bar area and then want you to, to watch your language and not, you know, do what you say with something what you want to talk about. I will intentionally talk about some shit that I know is inappropriate just to fuck them up. I started talking about fucking and orgasms and and dick cheese and all kind of shit. I say all kind of foul and funky shit because I want them to get them kids up out of there. Oh my God, you, you think you're gonna be catering to you just because you don't wanna go someplace and, br and, and bring your brats everywhere. That don't have shit to do with me. I'm here to be an adult and talk shit and eat my snacks and drink my beer and the drinks and whatever the fuck I was having, you know, happy hour special. And that's what I'm gonna do. And I really don't give any fucks about your kid. That's your problem. You shouldn't have had it. That's what they had birth control for. Exactly. Well, she didn't know what she was doing. She didn't know. You know, crazy white chick. She found out quick. And this was pre-Trump day. So, you know, she was out of her mind. I think it was Clinton in office. I don't remember who was in office then. 
she walked up on me and now all the white people I'm with right here, and they we all acting a fool. It wasn't just me. But I was the only black one and this I was the one that she came up to and I blew that bitch's hair back. And so she was I my people you know, I hated to kinda of do it because there was people that I worked with, but you know, they had an idea how it was, but after that even they left me alone. I'm like, Don't fuck with me. Do not I mean I look pleasant and you know, I have little dimples and shit, little fat cheeks and look all cute and everything, but I will fuck you up with my mouth. And that's when I was working as a trainer, too. I would have fucked her up physically as well. I don't know, because I don't know anything about Florida's laws. I just know about this this, bull, this bullshit. What is dick cheese? It's called smegma. When men are uncircumcised and they get that, like, cottage cheese shit, they have to clean that shit off every day a couple of times a day. Otherwise, it smells to high heaven. Now, it wasn't the 90s. It was in the 20. 2000 something like 2008, 9 something when that happened yeah <coughs> yeah it was nasty It was, you know what I'm saying I will talk about this just the grossest shit I can think about to make them be like Hoo! and then take that kid and leave I want them to leave I don't want them to be there while I'm trying to have my drinks and have fun <laughs> yeah, smegma. It's very gross. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys didn't know about that. Oh, honey, yes. Y'all must be young. You've been around the block like me of, uh, 512 times. You know about everything to be with a dick. <laughs> I'm just saying. See, y'all just just have me like be in bad habits, but I'm just explaining, you know, what happened. I'm just like a terrible, my mouth, I just can't control it sometimes when people make me mad. It's like, do not infringe on my rights. Do not try to dictate and regulate me and don't fucking tell me what to do. I can't stand that. And anybody who tries to do that, you know, they get cussed down instantly. That's just how I do things. That's just how I do. No religious people. Yes. You need my opinion on coffee dates. I must have missed the question. What's wrong with a coffee date? I mean, you know, a lot of women are like, well, you know, I want him to take me out somewhere. Let me explain to you why you don't want that. Okay, this is your first date with this motherfucker, right? You don't know this clown. You don't know what kind of idiot he is. Okay, now, I should share. I've had coffee dates that lasted 10 minutes. I didn't even finish the coffee. By the time the coffee came to the table and I had a few sips, I knew that this was not where I needed to be. So I created an emergency and I got the fuck up and left. Okay? So when you have a situation where it's your first date, you know, you start off with coffee. I mean, it might, you know, morph into something else. But there's nothing wrong with feeding someone for the first time over coffee or tea or, um, a uh, what you call it happy hour but you know, even that's kind of risky because you know you might have some alcohol and your tongue get loose or you you change up on you lose some women you know they get nervous right so then they drink to drink too fast on an empty stomach or something and then you start getting silly you lose control of yourself your brain sort of goes too much so I'm not necessarily recommending that I can hold my liquor so I you know and all I'm gonna do is talk even more shit but yeah, coffee dates give you a lot of flexibility and freedom that I think a lot of you don't really appreciate. You want some big production from a man that you don't even know if you want to see that motherfucker again. You don't even know if you want to see his ass for the next 10 minutes. So, you know, you, um, a coffee date is good. You know, you be in and out 30 minutes, 45 minutes at the most. And, you know, that you ask questions, you get to see what he looks like, you get to see what he's working with physically and, and mentally, you know, are his nails clean, is his breath good, his teeth fucked up, does he have like a grill, you know, some gold teeth and shit, see, I can't stand that. And does he have like, you know, crusty lips, is he ashy, all the kind of stuff you need to, you know, kind of get an eye out, and then you need to ask some questions, and you need to figure out what's going on with dude. Because I'm a firm believer, even though you talk on the phone, that's good, that's great. But a lot of communication takes place uh, visually, body language. You're never going to get the whole story on the phone. 
you have to meet with people in person. And if you're a good, I hate Starbucks coffee though, I'll go anywhere but Starbucks. And you have, um, you know, the ability to ask the right questions. And I have a video on the channel where I talk about that. It's called The Man Behind the Mask. And I give you suggestions for questions to ask that are probing questions that will give you, help you unmask who this man really is instead of asking a basic, stupid ass social question that people always ask, what's your favorite color? Well, what movie do you like? Well, how long was your last relationship? Well, where you work at? Well, yeah, 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 what's your hobbies? I mean, that shit, we'll save that shit for later. That don't mean nothing. I want to know how you think. I'm telling you, how does a motherfucker think? What are motherfuckers' values? You know, how does he, what's his belief system? What's his moral stance on stuff? That's the kind of shit you need to be finding out on the first date. Not what color he likes. Who gives a fuck about what color he likes? How that going to help you make a relationship with him based on that you're going to wear mashing clothes every day or some shit? I mean, what? That don't have nothing to do with nothing. Y'all, you, you got to, you know, look at the advantages here. Plus, it's like most dudes are not going to feel over, you know, overburdened by buying somebody a cup of coffee for $2. But, you know, they start shelling out $80 for a dinner. Well, then they're going to have, you know, some, they're going to feel some kind of way about it. I mean, you know, most of them. Some of them are because they, you know, it's, it's just money and they're not tripping. But, you know, a lot of these dudes, you know, they spending that kind of money. And it's, to them, it's a lot because they broke. And so they spend the $80. They had to save up for two weeks to get that money. So then they take you on a date and, you know, they expecting something to jump off. Not necessarily sex that day, but they're expecting a relationship, some, you know, some kind of something with some future to it. And then you decide that he's an idiot. Then, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You even background checks that don't tell you nothing that just tells you what is in the thing I mean a lot of people do criminal shit and ratchet shit and it's not in the background check because they never got caught but that doesn't mean that they're not ratchet and crooked and you know trifling and shit that's only going to tell you what arrest records and criminal activities that they have been found out about okay that's not going to tell you the whole story do not depend solely on a background check you have to meet these people and you have to talk to them you have to see his face and his facial expressions and his body language. You can tell a lot about what people are thinking and stuff by how they move. And if you know the size, there's probably websites that you can tell you if a man is lying, you know, if he's like, if he dodges questions, if he looks shifty in the eyes when you ask him certain things. Those are all things that you, you're never going to know that shit and lift you on the fucking phone. Get off the phone and meet these motherfuckers for some coffee. It's not going to kill you. And drive your own car. Don't let them walk you back to your car either. Just drop, walk out the coffee shop. You go this way and he goes that way. And park somewhere where there's a lot of light and there's a lot of people. And don't let him walk you to your car. You don't need to walk you to your car. So say goodbye to his ass at the, at the coffee shop. Signs of ratchetness. <laughs> well, that's probably a good one. Because there's a lot of signs of ratchetness around. We should put that down. I don't, I don't have a I'll watch the thing and I'll write it down later. Yeah. To, 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 you want to be around him enough to have date number two. You know. That's it. Well, he shouldn't be in an Uber. You can take an Uber if you want to. You can take an Uber because, you know, my thing is I'm going to park somewhere right and I'm going to take an Uber to the place and then I'm going to take an Uber back to my car. So you're not even going to know what kind of car I have. I'm good for doing that. I used to go to these clubs in San Francisco. Well, they didn't take Uber. They just walk. And my girlfriends always were like, why do you always make us park, park so far away? You know, it's just far away. I'm like, this is a good survival strategy. You'll see how it pays off one day. Sure enough, one day we was in this club in San Francisco. It was like, um, it was a first Friday event. And they had it at this showcase Galleria. Okay, it's kind of, it's an area that's not too far from the, where Niggerville, but there were projects and stuff, right? I mean, you know, the area is much different now. This was some years ago. But this, this is why my girlfriend's got to see why I parked so far away. Okay, so, and this is a good strategy for you two who may not have thought of this, but this is, see, they'll be thinking about everything. I'm going to make some, I'm going to make it out alive. I'm, I might be the only one, but I'm going to make it out alive. So we're in there, right? And they had security and the place was getting crowded and they had a line outside because they could not exceed the capacity for the venue, right? So they were only letting in people as other people left. Well, some niggas showed up. 
and I don't mean black people, I mean niggas, okay? And there was about 40 of them. They busted through, they overwhelmed the security guards, broke through the front door, just like, just like stampeded into this place where there was all these middle class and upper middle class, highly educated black people hobnobbing and doing, you know, with their little mixing and mingling thing, passing out business cards and all that shit that we do. And I had seen the commotion outside, right? You know, them getting angry and starting to get loud. So I go to my table where the girls are. I said, okay, you know, we all, we need to go. And they're like, well, why? I said, because this is some bullshit getting ready to go down and we need to get up out of here. And so the people had called the police, right? But the police weren't there yet when, when the nignogs broke in. Well, we was already outside. I made sure that they, because my rule is if you come with me, you leaving with me. And I'm like, well, y'all, you know, I'm getting ready to go. And so y'all need to come on, so let's go. Well, we had, you know, but I'm not. Okay, so they were so happy they did it because as we were walking down the street, there must have been 50 cop cars came rolling up because, you know, the niggas smelling like weed and all. I mean, just do, they were just doing the most. They were being violent, violent towards, they were beating on security guards and stuff, pushing people. You know, I mean, it was just really, it was a, it was a hot mess. And the, um, you know, the police came in and they was like all, you know, rousting people and all that shit. See, we could see all that happening, but we was down the street. And then we walked on down to the car. And then right then they had blocked the street off, right? Because there wasn't nobody leaving then. They had this place was surrounded because there was no nigga now that's going to get out unless they had on them bracelets. That was a slam slam of folks into the back of them police cars right and left. And they could tell who was, you know, who was the crashers because they were dressed differently. All of the other big the dudes had on suits and stuff and all the ladies had on, you know, like nice clothes or, you know, whatever. And, um, but we was down the street. Get my, we get that, I put their asses in my car hit that corner, went around, got on the freeway, went across the Bay Bridge, dropped them heifers off, and then went to my house, and then heard about all the drama that happened the next day. That's how I roll. So it might not be comfortable for walk them a couple of blocks in your heels. You might not really like that part. But once they saw that happen, I said, this is exactly why I do that. Because I want to be out of the place before some bullshit happens. And that's why I'm always, no matter where I am, I'm always scared of what's going on. What's happening? Who's doing what? What's people looking like? Who's getting ready to fight? You know, the expressions on people's face. I want to know what's happening because when some bullshit go down, Deb is out. And anybody who's with me is also out. And you better come on, otherwise you go on your own. Because I'm leaving. So, mm-hmm. So why they have all, they all got children? I don't know that part. And the women be dumb and be having, you know, uh, you know I'm gonna have a baby for him. If I had a dime for each dumb broad I heard say that, I would be rich. I'm gonna have a baby for him. You know, we gonna be a family. You just dumb. He don't have no money, he don't have shit. Living with his mama and you wanna have a kid with him. Do you know how much a fucking baby costs? What the fuck is your problem? What are you thinking? What are you doing? I don't know what to say. But I told my daughter, you coming here, we we'll talk about you pregnant and watch me beat your ass. I'm going to stomp that fucking baby out of you. And then I'm going to go around and whoever did it to you, I'm going to fuck them up too. So she's like, <laughs> my mother is crazy. I'm like, I don't call it what you want to. I'm just letting you know. This is, this, that, if that's what the path that you choose, this is going to be the result. Those are the repercussions. But yeah, this is definitely situational awareness. You got to always be vigilant about what's going on around you. Don't just be dumb, just sitting up there in a room full of people and you don't know what the fuck is going on around you. You know, you, you can't do that. You got to stay aware. It's kind of like, you know, how they show in the movies how somebody stays up and watches, you know, like everybody's sleeping there's one person standing guard with the gun watching. That's how I am. Everybody else might be drinking and doing stuff. And I'll drink, you know, I'll dance and stuff. But even then, I'm watching. I'm watching the exits. And I hate having my back to the door. I want to see what the fuck is coming in. And I want to know, when I go to a new place, I want to know where every exit is and where it leads to. So I'll be going in there, opening up doors, looking down to see where does, what street is this? Where does this let out? Where's my car in relation to this? I do all of that. I'm telling you, I do all of that. And people think I'm crazy. I don't, but you know what? I've never been involved in no shit. This is, this is it. The closest I came was one time I was at this club in Berkeley called Passans, and they used to have this downstairs. That's when I used to roll with these two thug dudes, right? 
Ooh, they was like, but they loved my ass, but they was something else. And uh, so they had taken me to this club, right? So, you know, all of a sudden we heard somebody say, he got a gun. And then people started running, right? And I, I was so off guard, I just froze. This was years ago, I was young. And I froze, and before I knew it, my ass had been lifted up. Each one of them grabbed one of my arms, like, you know, up here, not just at down at the hand part. Grabbed me, so I'm lifted up off the ground, and they tossed my ass over the bar, and then they died behind the bar with me, and then you could hear the gunshots and stuff. And people were stampeding up the stairs. People got stomped and all that kind of shit. It was crazy. It was in the newspaper. You probably could still find it online about what happened. And uh, I was like, what the fuck just happened? And it just, dude, he got, you know, he got jealous about some girl and then he want to shoot somebody. So that was the closest I came. But even then, you know, I did know where all the exits and everything were. But um, in that situation, you know, I, it just happened so fast. And I was like, well, you know, before they was, they said, he's got a gun. I mean, this club is crowded. Who has the gun? I mean, you know what I mean? You don't know who had it, but they knew. Because, I mean, you know, see, that's why it's good to have thug friends sometimes. And they tossed my ass over that thing. I was flying through the air like my was like the flying nun or something. No, nah, they wasn't white. They was black. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know no white thugs. But um, that was, that's, you know, some of my, um, some of my stories about my survival. I'm not, I ain't going to be the victim. I'm just never going to be that person I'm going to always be the one that's talking about what happened and the survivor but anyway um, it's getting dark and I'm getting hungry and uh, I think that's enough to talk to y'all so we'll be back together though on the weekend um, I, well, I'll look at some of your yeah you see I'm, I'm, eight, I'm, I'm, I'm showing my age I used to watch that show with my brothers my oldest brother used to like this show. He used to make us watch. I thought it was kind of interesting. But um, we uh, will be back on the weekend talking about something. Hell yeah, they saved me. They, they, they love my ass. Yeah, I was like their little sister or something. I don't know. But yeah, they would take me around places with them. It was cute. It was fun. They were cool. I didn't have no problem with them. But um, you guys... This has been great. It's always fun to get together with you because y'all just as crazy as I am. And uh, we, we always have a good time together. So I'll see y'all on Saturday or Sunday. And uh, make sure that you become a subscriber. There's the thing. There's a reminder to subscribe. That's where you subscribe. Press that little heart symbol with the DC in it right there. And... Uh, and then I will, you know, that you can become a subscriber to the channel on YouTube or, or a follower on Twitch. And I will greatly appreciate you taking the time to share. Pick a video that's your favorite and share the link on your social media or your Twitter or your whatever. Okay, you guys. See ya. Bye-bye.